I'm just going to be in the background. It's his, his show. I know you're not nervous. No. Okay. Okay. Can you tell us who you are? Diane. Ah, Diane Nesbitt. <laughs> okay. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Champaign, Nevada. Uh, born and raised here. Uh, lived in Birch Village. Mm-hmm. Come from a family of five. Uh, three brothers, one sister. Um, before my sister came, we lived in number 14, Birch Village. Then when my sister came, then we moved to number 16 because we needed more space. And back then, I didn't know Birch Village was considered public housing. I just thought it was just regular housing. A lot of people, WBCP, the radio people, mm-hmm. um, the Clarks and all of them, they lived up there. Mm. So living in Birch Village was like a neighborhood. You know, everybody watched out for everybody else's child. They disciplined their kids or whatever, you know. We had grass. Mm-hmm. We had rules. We had uh, curfews. And you had to do what mm-hmm. you know needed to be done. done. Then when um, my dad was a letter carrier, my mom didn't work at first. But then when my, uh, we moved from Birch Village to Dr. Ellis Subdivision, we were the third people to move into the Dr. Ellis Subdivision. So mm. That's interesting. So it was like just another house. Another house to me. Mm-hmm. But I, I'm, I'm a social worker now. Mm-hmm. So when I found out that uh, uh, Birch Village was part of public housing, I was like, oh, well, we live there, you know. <laughs> and when my kids, as they got older, or even growing up, you should live up there. I said, well, it wasn't like, like it is now. It's totally different now since they tore them down and rebuilt them. Though. But yeah, that was... Uh, consider public housing, so mm-hmm. which was okay. I mean, you had a roof over your head, you had food, you know, go to school every day. We walked to school. The local school was Washington School. Um, when we lived in Birch Village, when we moved to Urbana, then we went to J. W. Hayes School. It's now called Martin Luther King, I believe, school. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. how was life as a child? It was always curious for me. I I was the kid out of five kids, always mm-hmm. challenging things, interesting. Um, wanting to do this or wanting to do that. As I got older, I was the first one to go to college, first one to graduate, first one to get married, first one to have grandkids. And mm-hmm. I got tired of saying, okay, I'm done being first as four other kids. So, <laughs> But that, I have two grown daughters. Mm-hmm. Um, my youngest daughter has two boys. I have two grandsons, eight and one. Both of my girls have gone to college. My youngest one, youngest one just graduated last year with a dual master's in business. My oldest one graduated from Chicago... What is it called? U of I of Chicago in journalism. So she uh, was working up in Chicago as a teacher, one of the, next to the project where they tried to maintain dealing with kids, with troubled kids, right next to a very troublesome uh, public housing. It's horrible. So when I went up there to see the school, they have guards. They have, I mean, it's built with iron mm-hmm. fences, and it's right beside the public housing. Wow. So. Mm-hmm. How was school? School for me? Mm-hmm. What what kind? Of, elementary school, high school? High school. High school was fun. Mm-hmm. Um, had lots of friends. We sang in the choir, St. Luke Sammy Choir. Um, I went. I used to belong to a Baptist church. Never was baptized, but then when a lot of my friends went to St. Luke, I went to St. Luke and got baptized because they just sprinkle water in your head. Mm-hmm. Because I couldn't swim, I didn't want no one ducking me in the mm-hmm. water, so I joined uh, St. Luke's choir. Well, a lot of my friends, you know, we went to school. I didn't. Sh- Most of them went to Champagne School. I went to Urbana School. But you know, meeting up in the choir and whatnot, we would meet every Saturday with Willie T. Somerville. Uh, if something came up, you know, we had choir rehearsal on maybe two or three times out the week. Um, we go to Douglas Center. They used to have center used back then in the day was a green building, one floor, hardwood floors, and we would roller skate. You know, I mean, it's death trap up in there back in the day because mm-hmm. it was a small center, but we thought it was a big thing, and that's where kids communicated. You know, in the neighborhood was Douglas Center. You know, played softball in the field back in the day. Uh, we had teams and whatnot. We walked from um, Ellis Drive down to Romine and cut across a person's house. Because there was a path, we would go to the park and whatnot. I visited a lot of my friends in Dunbar Court and stuff like that. Shelton Laundry Mat used to be in the alley, so you know we knew people from there, and um, I just knew a lot of people. I say I would know a lot of people because my dad, he was outgoing. He was very outgoing, outspoken. He was a letter carrier, so on his route, he would visit with people, talk with people, you know, blah blah. blah. So I have a lot of my father's trade in me, as opposed to my mother, who's kind of laid back or whatever. You know, she'll ask questions, but. You know, that outgoing, that's not my mother, I, that's me and my dad. Mm-hmm. And I think out of all five of us, I'm the most outgoing person, so, mm-hmm. yeah. which I love to do, so. Mm-hmm. How was the choir? The choir, we made an album with, uh, oh, what was his name? We made a, what was his name? Do you remember I told you his name? 
Yes, but I don't remember because I didn't ever. I hadn't heard of him. Um, because there's an album I think Mr. Somerville has it. We have this on the album. What is his name? It, uh, it'll come back to me. But anyway, mm -hmm. we made an album. We used to go to Cranor and do concerts there quite a bit mm -hmm. growing up and whatnot. People loved to come out and see us sing and whatnot. And being under the uh, leadership of Somerville, you know, we had to stand up all at one time, sit down at one time, we had to be on the same key or whatnot. And I mean, he's just driven us to do our best, you know, and strive. James Cleveland was his name. Mm -hmm. We made a good thing with James mm -hmm. Cleveland. So, mm -hmm. but I thank Somerville, Willie T. Somerville. If you want to get in contact with him, just ignore that. <laughs> I can turn it off. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um. Um. And. You might be able to get a copy of, you know, like you said, you know, you can scan that copy thing with the choir and James Cleveland. Um, that was a big concert when he came to town at the time. Mm -hmm. So uh, we would do other, I can't think of other people that we did concerts with or, uh, or whatnot, you know, back in the day. But mm -hmm. he stands out because that was a big thing. So was singing a really big thing um, back then in the community? It was more or less kids mm -hmm. connected and, you know, you can go because it got you out the house. Mm -hmm. Parents knew where you were at. You were at church. They knew we were going to be there for two or three hours, sometimes longer, practicing and whatnot. So parents knew where, where we were at at times. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, compared to nowadays where kids go out and do this, you don't always know where the kids are at. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Did you always have a passion for singing? No, I just got in the choir because everybody else was in the <laughs> choir. <laughs> and it was, it was fun. It was, mm -hmm. We had a lot of fun, so yeah. Mm -hmm. What was the drill team like? Ooh, that was fun. That was even better. <laughs> uh, the drill team, because we practiced, uh, I don't know what year I got in the drill team, but in 60, I, couldn't, I would have to do some subtracting from where I'm at now to back then. To know, it was, I know I was in high school. But the drill team was fun because people would come and watch us. We would uh, practice on, in the park, the black top over there by Washington School that faces the park, uh, where Douglas Center used to be at. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not up there anymore because they've re redone all that, so. And the guy playing the drums or whatnot would be hot. I mean, we have to practice long and hard. And I don't know how we got to go to New York, how all that came about, but we were able to go to New York. There was a bus that we had chaperones. My mother was one of the chaperones. My aunt was one of the chaperones. We stayed in this fabulous hotel in New York, and we just thought it was heaven, you know, being mm -hmm. up there. Um, but we were, and we had to get up the next morning and be ready. We had to wait almost four hours before we could take a place in line because that's how long the parade was. And we did win first place up there, so mm. it was it was fun. Plus, go go shopping in New York. Oh God, shoes were cheap, four ninety nine. We go walking. I would be walking sometime, and you have to really pay attention in New York because it's a busy city, mm -hmm. and not you know from a little small town going somewhere that big and being that young, I almost got hit because you know people are selling stuff. They open up coasts, they got watches. I mean, people are doing everything, mm -hmm. so it was kind of scary. But you had to be you know, they looked out, parents looked out for us and whatnot. But it was fun. So New York was a really big thing. Oh yeah, that was mm -hmm. a big thing. That was mm -hmm. a big thing. Didn't come back to Champagne and say hey. We made it. We made first place and everything. So that mm -hmm. was a big thing. Made news and everything. Made the paper. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Yeah. Where are some of your memories from the drill team? Uh, hanging out with friends and mm -hmm. learning how to do the drills or whatnot. Because we did drills on uh, on campus at the Union and stuff. We would perform throughout Champaign-Urbana. So. Hmm. What attracted you to the drill team? Uh, I, I don't know... I, I can't remember if they asked you to be in the drill team or you just came and you competed. Compete. I, I really can't tell you at that point. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it was really a competition. They just asked girls to sign up or be involved or whatnot. And maybe with Barbara knowing some of our parents back then, you know, my made her ask. I, I really don't know. Mm -hmm. Who were some of the people on the drill team and do you still know them today? Yes, I know quite a few of them, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but when they have champagne about it, a few have come back. I've taken pictures or whatnot of people that have come back. Um, some still live here in Champaign, Urbana, you know, so. Mm -hmm. And that one time they had thought about having a reunion of the drill team, mm -hmm. but someone would have to be responsible to get that up and going, you know. And I could probably do that research, you know, find out where Dick Tom Harry is, even though we got uh, Facebook now, it would be much easier to find and locate some of the people. Mm -hmm. Now, whether or not we can still do some of the steps, that's a different story. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, um, what attracted you to dancing, you know, being on the team? 
It was more or less like uh, mm-hmm. like you're in a sorority. Mm-hmm. It's a stepping line. That's what the drill team was like. Mm. That's what that was like, you know. Uniform, you know, right foot, left foot, you know, being on time, being on target, keeping your head straight above, you know, know what you know your steps, you know, mm-hmm. staying focused and uh, looking ahead. Mm-hmm. What were some of the difficulties or objectives of being on the drill team? I didn't. I can't think of anything. Mm. I can't think. All fun. It was just all fun. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, they they worked us, but you had to be good at what you did, you know. Mm-hmm. And then, like, we also uh, performed in the Fourth of July parades all the time. Mm-hmm. So, and people would just come out. And for being in a black community, and then when you go out back then, you know, you still had some of that segregation, and whatnot. So, mm-hmm. but so when we were in the parade, you know, we there was a variety of people looking at us, you know. So it's more mm-hmm. more so of a white crowd than a black crowd, mm-hmm. but you got more black people to come to the parade too. Mm-hmm. As you have nowadays, a lot of blacks don't really go to the parade, mm-hmm. you know, so. Mm-hmm. Was there any um, racism or negativity point at you when you went on trips to different towns? No, mm-hmm. no. We didn't have anything like that, no. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. How was performing when you performed in New York? It was tense, mm-hmm. exciting, and having to wait before we can get in line where we're supposed to be in line, we're like, good God, you know, this is mm-hmm. much bigger than what they have in Champagne for the 4th of July. So mm-hmm. it was a big thing, you know, back mm-hmm. then. Yeah. And we were tired. I mean, it was a long, because it was so hot out and having those uniforms on, long sleeves, so that made it even more hotter, you know, whatnot. We used to get our clothing from the surplus. We got the white sailor outfits from the surplus store, I believe. Mm-hmm. The unit, the, the, yellowish polyester suits we had I'm not sure they might have ordered those or whatnot and I think it was the director people who decided you know uh, and asked us you know did we like those outfits and we said yeah so mm-hmm. those were the outfits we went they did include us in asking us different mm-hmm. things and whatnot so mm-hmm. we had to pay for them you know so we had to save or ask parents or you know so we can pay for our own outfit ourselves or whatnot because mm-hmm. at that time some of us were not working you know so so was that the style back then but hmm. the outfits. Oh yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. that was a that was a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> the sailor outfit, yes, the white ba- the flared pants and the sailor, uh, just like a sailor going to the the service and whatnot mm-hmm. with the white hat. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we we thought we were sharp back then. Mm-hmm. Now today I was wearing it like that. <laughs> <laughs> how was the music circa back then, or um, how was um, what was the music like? Uh, music and me, I'm not good with. Mm-hmm. Name it, I could, it was good music, mm-hmm. funky music, you know. You dance to it, and you, it was a beat, you know. Not like a hip-hop nowadays, mm-hmm. the music and the dance, and not mm-hmm. like it is today compared to what it is back then. Mm-hmm. So, Who were some of your favorite singers? I don't know, babe. <laughs> I don't, <laughs> I just listened to, I could never remember songs. I remember one time I wanted to, uh, learn, I played a mute uh, record one time so long and wrote down the words till I learned that. Mm-hmm. So I'm not one who can pick up lyrics and all like that and remember mm-hmm. if I like it, I like it. If I don't, I don't. Back then, if, you know, you hear our parents playing blues or whatnot. I'm like, oh mm-hmm. my God, that old music. Now today, I love blues. Mm-hmm. But back then, you know, it's just one of the generation things. Mm-hmm. But music, I could, I'm not familiar with music. You know, I liked it. You know, we danced, Funky Four Corners, The the Jerk, The... Oh, I forgot the mother name. I even went on The Hop one time. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Hop was on Channel 3. Ed Kelly was the promoter, and blacks then didn't go on the hop or whatnot. But this guy, we were able to get tickets to go on the hop. It was on a Saturday at five o'clock. Oh, that was big for me to be on the hop. Mm-hmm. So, and that that was fun back then. Mm-hmm. I have to stop for a minute because of the battery.